answers? I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. You want answers? You have offended my family. I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth. And you have offended Shaolin Temple. You can't handle the truth. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Radical Brandt. You may recall a couple of weeks ago, I believe it was, we did the story on the musician who was uh, performing in his basement in Michigan. Uh, they were recording a, a jam session, a, a practice session, when the cops burst in uh, based on a, a warrant they would received uh, from searching his garbage and finding a stem and from one of those anonymous tips, you know. And uh, they had found a, a quarter ounce of marijuana and the uh, police officers were recorded on tape talking about how they could use asset forfeiture to seize all that man's uh, equipment, all his property. We told you about that story and, and, and during that story I mentioned how uh, the drug war, one of the saddest parts about it is that it does corrupt law enforcement. It does cause some uh, bad cops to take advantage of this, you know, after demonizing uh, drug users uh, that they feel like, oh, we're just scum and we deserve what we get and why should they be making a police officer's salary? Well, there's all, all this cash here, etc. So there's a lot of corruption in the drug war that doesn't get uh, doesn't get as much media play as it should. So I wanted to take this opportunity to commend the San Francisco Chronicle newspaper, which is uh, on in yesterday. Uh, Jackson Vanderbeeken, uh, Chronicle staff writer, writes about a case that's going on in San Francisco. A San Francisco judge dismissed marijuana trafficking allegations Wednesday after finding a videotape contradicting officer's account of a drug search at a suspect's Richmond District Department. In the latest case, latest case, in which video appeared to undermine police testimony, <laughs> Superior Court Judge Gerardo Sandoval issued his dismissal order after a three-day preliminary hearing on drug dealing charges lodged against McLaren Wenzel, age 23, stemming from a March 1 police search and seizure of four pounds of marijuana. Sandoval cited inconsistencies in the police accounts with the videotape. Now, this case, this new case, uh, uh, has strong similarities to the scandal unfolding against eight Southern Station officers who have been reassigned from a plainclothes detail after videotapes appeared to contradict their accounts of several drug raids in a Tenderloin single-room occupancy hotel. So far, that scandal has triggered the dismissal of 76 cases and an ongoing FBI probe. All right, so here's what uh, happened as we get down further in the stage, uh, the, the uh, story here is that the officers recounted that they were answering a report of a possible marijuana grow operation inside the building on 33rd Avenue and Geary Boulevard when they encountered Wenzel, the 23-year-old, uh, as he came out of the unit. They said that they had their stars visible outside their clothing, you know, their badges, right? They had their stars visible outside their clothing when they talked to the 23-year-old who admitted having a small amount of marijuana <sighs> All right. Uh, and showed them his prescription note, his medical marijuana recommendation note. Again, the media, after 15 years, does not understand it's not a prescription, it's a recommendation. Anyway, he showed them his recommendation note and then let them in 30 seconds after he went back inside his unit, uh, according to police here. His public defender, accompanied by uh, his defense attorney, Robert Amperin, played surveillance tape at a press conference, pointing out that the tape clearly showed the officers did not have their stars visible as they entered the underground garage and as they walked down the hall toward Wenzel's unit. They said it appeared that rather than waiting for Wenzel to go inside his unit and give them permission to enter, the officer simply followed him in from the hallway. <laughs> so based on the videotaped evidence, this is according to Adachi, the uh, public defender, uh, based on the videotaped evidence presented in court and the testimony of the sergeant in court, Judge Sandoval dismissed the case, finding that the testimony was not credible and not supported by the evidence. Uh huh. And this is just the newest case. Again, the previous case they're talking about, 76 cases have been dismissed uh, in this uh, in this scandal going on in San Francisco and San Francisco we're talking about just one city and a city that's very very friendly to the whole notion of medical marijuana and and people using cannabis so uh, for them to be finding these you know, you know they're the ones that are most likely going to find this kind of corruption uh, and want to point it out and so you know it's got to be going on in cities all across America and the really ironic part of this to me is that uh they got these three officers, three different officers who got up on the stand and told the same test a lie, 
and and civil libertarians, you know, like myself, we always get upset about there being so many video cameras in society and we have no privacy and everywhere we go, we're on camera. Isn't it kind of ironic that to protect the civil liberties of this man, this 23-year-old Wenzel, uh, from these cops lying on the state, the stand, was because there were all these surveillance and video cameras around. That now we have to have the surveillance and video cameras around in the public sphere to protect us from the law enforcers. And it's also quite tragic, if you ask me, that in, I believe it's 12 states, maybe it's 13, I'm not sure exactly right now, but uh, in a number of states in the United States, you uh, can be prosecuted for videotaping the police on your own. Uh, there's all sorts of wiretapping laws and secret recording laws that they'll use against you. So that if you try to film uh, officers doing their job uh, in the course of trying to arrest or investigate you, you can be prosecuted for obstruction of justice. How's that for life in the land of the free under the drug war? I'm Radical Russ. Thanks for joining us. We're going to stay tuned for Hour 2. Coleco the interns here as well as Cannabis Carry will have ourselves a good time and some conversation on the topics of the day. We're also taking your calls at 971-533-7111. Ganja John's up in Denver for the uh, High Times Medical Cannabis Cup. He'll have some reports on the weekend, I believe, on his Ganja John channel on Stick'em. We'll also see if we can get him on the phone, maybe get a recording with him and Danny and some of the other folks out there. So we will be back next week for another week of podcasts. For those of you staying here live, uh, ho hope you stay with us the whole hour. And also stay tuned for the rest of the shows coming up on the normal network. For Ganja Johnny Cannabis, carry out Radical Russ. Until next time, take care of each other, tokers. And happy April Fool's Day. We love, it. We love the earth. This is Normal Show Live.